I'm back, baby. I'm back. Today we are drawing hair, and I like drawing hair. There are the least amount of rules, and you can go wild and experiment so much. There are some rules. I mean, I'm making a tutorial, but they are more like guides. Well, actually, a rule and a guide. You can. Oh. For a long period of time, hair was stressing me so much. Whatever technique I was using, whatever brush I was using, I always ended up with something that looked like a pile of sh**. So, how I managed to fix that problem in my art? I went and bought all the fancy hair brushes that were available. I was thinking that once I have them uploaded in my Photoshop, with one stroke, I will be basically done with the hair. And I was done thinking. And then I went to Pinterest to find some quick hair art tutorials. Actually that helped because I learned how to draw really magnificent hair stroke. But And after all this, I just gave up and decided to spend more than 10 minutes if I actually want to learn something about drawing. And I went to the pros for advices. Some artists are focused on the shape of the hair. Some artists use just a few strokes and lines to show the movement of the hair. And some artists draw the most photorealistic hair ever possible. As I did my researches with these fellows, I saw that no matter the technique they were using, no one divides the hair in single locks that looks super realistic. Everybody treats the hair as a whole object rather than single locks. And the second big thing that I found out was in the blog of artist and YouTuber James Gurney and he talks about the ribbon secret. Basically, this is a technique in which you treat the locks of hair as ribbon-shaped elements. With the ribbon, the highlight goes across, not along the curving shapes. I will link the blog post about it in my description. Based on all that, what are the steps I'm doing when drawing the hair? Shape. First define the bigger picture. Volume, which I show with the way I draw my lines in the sketch and in the final version. Texture. All these details like flying hair, frizzy hair, all of these help for the polished final look of the drawing, but I have to block the first two steps before jumping on details. This is not a tutorial. I mean, I'm making a tutorial. No, 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 no. I'm just sharing how I draw the hair and my approach to this topic. So take whatever is useful for you, but be sure to check the artist I've mentioned in the video. Link in the description for all of it, plus the ribbon technique. Yeah, don't leave everything to an artist who doesn't even know how to stylize her own hair. Regrets, regrets. First, I will mark what is the shape of the hair. The arrows show me how the hair falls and bends. And I will speed up the drawing of the character more in depth of my head process you can see in my other videos. I don't follow specific rule for where the hair starts. I sketch the general shape of the hair. You can see I draw the hair a bit over the head. If you draw realistically, this space should be a bit smaller, but since I'm stylizing more, I can experiment more. And the waves which I marked help me keep the original style of the hair in the reference. Then I make one more sketch to refine the hair and I'm done with the sketch part. Now let's cover that thing. I will show you three types of covering and yes, you can test them both on paper and tablet. 
The first I do when I'm drawing in my sketchbook. I also draw like that when I want more realistic effect. Okay, so here is where the hair curves and that will be the lighter part. I add my base color with these type of curved strokes. I try not to have hard edge where one line stops and other starts, so everything blends nicely. I can repeat this several times depending on how dark the hair is. The only place where I don't draw are the bumpy parts. For the light, I will use eraser to delete some color and add white strokes in between the part I covered. And last, I will add some single dark hairs crossing the brightest part so we have more stroke definition. Ok, let's try this on the character. I already have a base color and now I will sketch one more time all the hair except the bumpy parts where the light hits the most. I will darken the inside even more and then add some details overstepping the fact that the details should be last. And now I will add brightness. If I am on sketchbook I will use the eraser again. Ok, and another method is something that I wanted to test as well. Line Decker is superb in the stylization and he draws amazing hair. Let's try his style as a study. Spoiler, it's my first try and it is shaky. So the main thing that I see is that the hair is divided in parts. I will again make the inside parts darker and then light on the whole hair. For the details, I divide the hair by adding more shadows on some of the locks and adding some dark lines. A cool detail is that he divides the locks of hair not only with dark lines, but sometimes with lighter color, so I'm adding some on my girl as well. And a side note, how to make it look not like a wig with that hard edge? I add some strokes with the color of the face in the hair, or better some strokes from the hair on the forehead, but then I erase them a bit, so the transition looks more smooth and not super dark and weird. And last, how I will approach the hair? Well, since I do really stylized characters, I will try to push the hair shape and volume a bit more. I like her bangs and I will push the shape even further. And yes, the photo reference doesn't have that kind of bangs and I will draw them because who cares, we don't need to follow the photo reference on 100%. Actually, I always prefer not to do it. Ok, I find the shape I like and after I made the sketch, I add some base color and some general light in the curved parts. Because I don't do detailed coloring, I have to show the movement of the hair with just a few lines. So if you are doing a stylized hair, think about the direction of the few strokes you are making. Ok, let's try that with the short hair. The original hair shape is ok, but it's a bit flat, so I will change it as I told you because I use the reference not so close. So first I'm drawing the outline to mark the shape of the hair and then with lines I will mark the volume and the direction of the locks. For the coloring, again, I will use the methods I've already showed you. For line decker, flat color, then the shadow, for the whole hair again, while I leave some parts where the light should be. Then more dark values to show what hair is back and finally strokes of dark and light to define the locks even more. And if I'm sketching, I will draw with more textured brush, I will make some strokes in the direction of the hair and I will leave the part where the hair should be hit by the light, uncovered or erase some cover if I'm on sketchbook. We can see from the previous drawings and here from the photo reference that the light hits in different spots, so when I'm not exaggerating as much, I try to follow this rule. For curly hair, I will again see what is the general shape and then I will mark with lines the direction of the hair I will follow. 
I can use some sort of sketching of the curls, which is more detailed, but I prefer more stylized version, which is not so busy for the eye. Sometimes it helps me to color the whole hair shape. Here I will do that. This will be the base and then I will start to add the curls with these curvy strokes. Sometimes I draw curvy lines, sometimes I draw straight lines. Depends on the style and what you want to achieve. It's all about having fun, I will show you both ways. Now, the top of the hair is where the light hits and I will add light as well. I decided to have bigger curls than the reference. If you want smaller, you just have to make your details smaller. Then I add shadow from the bottom and a bit more bright spots at the very top. Another way is to use more textured and chunky brush to draw curly hair. And here I will sketch the hair using straight lines. Bendy. <laughs> okay, I went to pet my dog. I'm sorry, I'm back. Here I will use also straight lines for the edges of the hair and the details like light. Plus, I'm making everything a bit smaller than before to indicate smaller curls. By the way, drawing hair is always one of the fun parts for me because with hair you can experiment so much. There are the least amount of rules I try to follow when drawing hair. With the face features or the body proportions, you always have to double check if everything is correct. Benji agrees. That's why here I tried even more different ways to draw the curly hair, so I can push the design even further and make it more fun and not so predictable. First of all, I do braids like this. It's easy to draw and shape it in super different ways without being super stressed which stroke is in front of which. But we are making a tutorial, so let's draw a classical braid even if my head will be in pain hours after that. First I draw the shape of the lock of hair and the lines crossing it. Then I delete the lines on the side and draw the correct shape. And after that, I add shade where the strokes of hair cross. We are done. But we are not. So, I make my shape first with the line in the middle. The left braid is twisted, so is my line. Now I add the crossing lines. You see my struggle here? Geez, braids are the opposite of fun. And we have them, the chunkiest braids in history. Cover one will be more realistic slash sketch style. I will sketch with the strokes I've showed you. Keep in mind that we don't want hard edges when we sketch. Then I repeat that with one step darker color and add some dark strokes over the bright parts to make it even more realistic. Braid 2 is covered more stylized, as I do with my characters. In the end, I draw a big dark shadow on both sides, as is in the photo reference. We are done. For the dreadlocks, I usually look how each of them stay on the head and I make some outline.
here again I will cover the whole shape because as with the curly hair sometimes full cover help me define everything better. Now, first I will do more stylized covering. Starting from the back, I gradually decide which will be the lightest and which will be the darkest look. Then I draw the curved lines to indicate the shape and some light in the same direction. With the second method, I first play with the sketch and change the shape a bit. Here I will use really textured brush and I will draw the base cover in this direction and then add straight line of dark color to separate the locks. That will be the more realistic approach to this hairstyle. I usually draw the bangs in two ways. Before that I have in mind that the model is tilted a bit towards us, so her hair should start a bit lower than usual. I use the lines of her face to help me see the curve that the bang will make. Side tip for ponytails, buns and stuff like that. Be careful if the stuff is in front of the hair or behind because this can mess up the whole drawing. The more stylized way is to make the general shape and cut it where I want with a line and then add a few strokes to divide the bank in several parts. For the buns I add few curved lines to indicate the volume. The second type of bank is more messy and realistic. I'm covering this using the same method I used for the braid and for the straight hair. And for the stylized bank, I draw one general light over the base cover and just a few shadows in between the strokes of hair. More tips on how I draw hair, as well as two speed paints, which brushes I use for today's video, and some more procreate tips you can see in the longer version of this video. I will upload it in my Patreon. The plan is to have shorter version of the videos here and longer in my Patreon account. So if you want you can go there and support me. The next video will be Q&A, so if you have some questions for me, you can share in the comments. I read my comments, I can reply to all of you, I've tried that, but it didn't work out. But yeah, I see and I really appreciate. Thank you for watching and until next time!